Praise the Lord. Praise the Lord. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Father, we exalt you. We magnify you. Spirit of a living God, we invite you into this discussion, O oh God. We seek your counsel, we seek your knowledge, we seek understanding, we seek the wisdom that is from above. Father, grant us even this desire of our heart tonight. Thank you, mighty God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. I'm going to appeal to you to switch on your videos. Switch on your videos so that uh, in this discussion we can see you. We can see who is talking. This is our Bible study 275. And the topic is, if a new edition of the Bible were to be written today, would you be in it? If a new edition of the Bible were to be written today, would you be in it? The background scripture is taken, there well, are two scriptures really. First one is from Luke 24. 44 to 49. Luke 24, 44 to 49. Then Jesus said to them, These are the words which I spoke to you while I was still with you, that all things must be fulfilled which were written in the law of Moses and the prophets and the sounds concerning me. And he opened their understanding that they might comprehend the scriptures. Then he said to them, thus it is written, and thus it was necessary for the Christ to suffer and to rise from the dead the third day. And that repentance and remission of sins should be preached in his name to all nations, beginning at Jerusalem. And you are witnesses of these things. The second scripture is simply a contextualization of the statement that he made. One example of that which was written in the scriptures concerning him that had to be fulfilled. And that comes from Psalm 40, verse 7. I'm going to read Psalm 40, verses 7 to 8. Then I said, Behold, I come. In the scroll of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do your will, O my God, and your law is within my heart. In the volume of the book, it is written of me. I delight to do your will, oh my God. So my first question tonight for our discussion is this. And if you have an answer, just raise your hand in the usual way and I will call you. Don't let your answers be too long. First question, is the Bible written about you? Or is it only written about Jesus? Is the Bible written about you? Or is it only written about Jesus? What do you think? Have you discovered that the Bible is actually written about you? Or is it only written about Jesus? Anybody? Is the Bible only written about Jesus or is it also written about you?
Nobody. I'll go to the next question. Maybe it will bring you out. Which character in the Bible do you identify with the most? And why? Which character in the Bible is most like you? And why do you think so? Anybody? Which character in the Bible do you identify with the most? Matachi, you are raising your <laughs> Matachi, you are raising your hand physically. Let me see if I can find you here. Okay. okay. Um, I don't know if I, I identify directly with Jonah, but I, I like Jonah a lot. Mm -mm, I, I like who you like. Who do you identify with? In which case, there must be certain things, certain things about that character that is that you found in you. Not who. Well, okay. I <laughs> I like the fact that. Um, that I identified, uh, one thing I can identify with Jonah about me is the fact that uh, he didn't want to do what God wanted him to do. And there are a lot of things God wants me to do that I don't want to do. And then, <laughs> and the fact that uh, he argued, he was angry with God, and I find that so hilarious that God asked him, why are you angry? And he had the temerity to respond back that, why shouldn't I be angry, you know? <laughs> he had that conversational um, relationship with God. I like that about him, and I think I am um, a bit like that, too. Can you, can you share with us which Nineveh God told you to go to, like you decided to go to Tashish? Ah. <laughs> <sighs> I need a minute to think about it. There are many um, Tashishish, well, if that's the right word, that I went to. Okay. Um, there was a, a, um, a, a, a dream I felt I had and I, I, about somebody and I, I felt that, oh, I should, you know, go ahead and tell the person, but I, I, Needed to get clearance with God about it. Should I? Is it something I should just pray about? Is it something I should discuss with the person? I didn't get the release to talk to the person about it. But I think maybe I just wanted to feel like I'm a super spiritual sister. And uh, I went ahead and I told the person. And I regretted telling the person. And to this day, I'm not very vocal about uh, such experiences. That's the opposite of Judah. You went and did. Um, you know, I mean, what God tells you to do, you don't have to enjoy doing it. He, he didn't tell me to do it. I, I asked if I should go ahead and tell him. And I didn't get the release to do so. And then, even though I, I didn't feel right about telling the person, but I, I felt that, well, I should go ahead either way. And it went sour, so. Is it something good or something bad? It was something bad. It was but something bad. And to know about it. Well, the person um I think maybe was embarrassed that uh, somebody else could have an inkling about that without having evidence or direct, you know, um contact with the issue at hand and they felt well, okay, even if God told me, I mean, if the person didn't take it well. You know, and I think God knew that the person was, sir? It doesn't matter how the person takes it. If God sends you to somebody, they will not like what you want to tell them. Hmm. If he sends you to somebody, it's the ministry of Isaiah, it's the only ministry. You will speak to them and they will not listen to you. They won't like what you want to tell them. 
That's why he's sending you. So don't bother about that. Don't be concerned about what people think. I have somebody called Galaxy J7. Who is Galaxy J7? I don't know who Galaxy J7 is. But maybe we'll see your face. Who is Galaxy J7 Neo? Okay, hey, tell me now. Okay, please go ahead. Hello, sir. Good evening, sir. The Lord be with you, sir. With you. It's very really nice to see you. Thanks for the good job. Uh, I thought to respond to the first question you asked. Yes. The first question is if the Bible is written about Jesus or about me. My understanding of the scripture from Genesis to Revelation is that it is all talking about me. It is all talking about us. How we need to live here on earth to please God. Now, everything that is written, although there are different names there, names of different people and all of that, it is all talking about us. If we act in, in, in line with what an individual best does, whether good or bad, that's how it will also uh, turn out for us. I.e., if you follow the good character there, then things will fall out good for you. If, on the other hand, you choose to do otherwise, like some others in the scripture too, so too will it happen to you. So I think the, genesis, the, 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 the scripture from Genesis to Revelation is written about us. That's how I feel about it. Before you go, let me, let me ask you an additional question, which was okay. my next question, although I'm still going to go back to others. Okay. Are you blind, Bartimius? If what? Are you blind, Bartimius? Oh, yes, I feel, I feel so. Please explain. Now, there are blind Bartimaeus, you must be saying it in the case where uh, he was crying to the Lord, um, son of David, help me, and all of that, and the rest of them. He was blind. And at the end of the day, yeah. come back. He was blind. Yes, he was blind. Yes. But then when he cried to the Lord, at a point in time, Jesus Christ stopped and sent for him, and he came to the Lord. He threw away everything and came to him. He was made whole. He, saw, he, had, he received his sight. And then he followed from there on. I think I came on board in similar manner. There was a time when I was, I was trying to justify everything. I wouldn't. But when eventually, when I was at a, at a crossroad and I cried to the Lord and <clears throat> He, he answered me. Since then, I threw away everything in the world to follow him. So I feel, I feel I'm like him in that wise. Can you now see? Come back. Bartimaeus was blind. God yes. Gave him sight. Can you see? Yes. I think I see, I think I see now. You see the as opposed, of God. I see now, as opposed to the darkness that I was before, I think now I can see. Can you see the kingdom of God? Can you see how God works? Can you see God on the move? In a lot of ways, I see him. Just this morning, for instance, let me say this. Just this morning, for instance, in our, in our home, um, in our house fellowship, at the house here, you know, uh, morning devotion, when we're having our morning devotion, we, we, we liken some of the things that we see today, even in the church and all that, uh, we see people all over the earth moving up and down the streets of the earth and all of that, and we think we all have life. And I was explaining to my people this morning that, no, the fact that you see thousands and millions of people in the church does not necessarily mean that they have life. That if you don't have Jesus, you don't have life. Now, I explain this to the effect that although people um, go about life, they are living, you see them living here on earth, they, they, they build houses, they 
pursue money, they marry, they have children and all of that, it does not necessarily follow that they have life. Even though we all go to church, it does not necessarily follow that we have life, except we accept Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior. Now, accepting Jesus Christ as our Lord and Savior, we can discuss that one again. But in this slide, I'm trying to say that when Adam died, Adam disobeyed the word of God, ate the fruit himself and the wife, ate the fruit, the forbidden fruit, and he died. They died. But after they died, thereafter, hello? I'm following you. I said he continued, continued living for 700 years. In the Fine. Family. Now, after they died, after they had died, because the word of God says, the day you eat of this fruit, that day you will surely die. So I believe when they ate the fruit that day, they actually died. Now, some people say it's spiritual death. I don't believe that. God did not specify it's going to be spiritual or physical. But then, when they were 130 years, they started having children. They had the first child and then the next and so on and so forth. And they continued to stay here on earth. I won't call it live now. Here on earth until they were until Adam was 900 and something years before he eventually left this earth. But then all that while, before he was 120 years, 30 years, he had died. And then I started showing to my family the, um, the symbols of death. They, they, they are all there in the scripture. But over the years when I read these things, I wouldn't see them. So it makes me feel that now, yes, I can see. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Mister, you know, we have to, as, a, as, a, as, a, uh, as a young believer, I went to church and God opened my eyes. And everybody that I saw were skeletons. They were old men. There you are. And mm -hmm. it was, they were dying of Kashyoko. Now, these are actually people who presumably were born again. Exactly. But they were not fed. Mm -hmm. They were fed in the body, but not in the spirit. There and you are, yeah. Walking like old men. So I'm just contextualizing uh, uh, the revelation that you have given us. I can see Daniel, Daniel Ekaraga. Daniel, please go ahead. Daniel. What happened to you again? You disappeared. I called you, you disappeared. <laughs> Daniel, where are you? Daniel, go ahead. I'm okay. I can identify with Daniel in the Bible, on the one hand, now, there are two Daniels, the, um, the one that was um, cast in the lion's den. On the one hand, then the first question, like you said, which um, um, our brother just the scripture actually has to do with it. And why I identify with Daniel in the Bible, the one that was shown in the lion's den, is because in some way, so many ways, when I look at his story, and not just him alone, there are some other characters, but when I look at his story, I see a similarity, a pattern with my life to an extent. And most times, it's got to do with things that are really, really threatening, life-threatening issues. Now, it might not be the same context, but of course, I see similarities that I wouldn't want to go into details because of uh, them. Beyond that, the scripture really is about us. Everything about what Jesus says is really about us. What he felt, the things he did, the things he said we would do. And to the extent that he said we even do greater things than he did. Now, the question then is, if Jesus says we're going to do greater things than he's going to do, the first thing is we're going to have to identify what are the greater things. And two, are we actually doing the greater things? So that alone says, or, or, 
or should I say, um, expresses the fact that scripture continues even after the Bible characters. Because if Jesus says some people are going to do greater things, it means that these things, if they were recorded in the same Bible, they'll probably be greater than things that were done by Elijah, well, even Jesus himself, because he said, you do greater things than I did. You know, that's my little contribution for now. Okay, thank you, Daniel. Uh, I can see Benedict. Good evening, sir. Good evening, Benedict. Good, good evening, everyone. The first question, I agree with the Bible, because the Bible is talking about me. It's talking about Jesus, I think it's talking about me. Because Jesus said, I think in Luke 24, 44, he told the people that was working with after when he read the rate, that, they, that the, scripture, the scripture said, everything that the prophets, that Moses will talk about, Going to come to pass, going to fulfill all of them. And I believe that the scripture also is talking about me. And the second one, I agree, the second question, I agree with the, with John 9. Because I remember one day I was in my in my devotion, one devotion, and I was praying, and God gave me that word that I'm like a man that was born from birth from blind. And I started saying that I was thinking about it, and every point of my life. Every stage of my life fits in, into it. Because sometimes I go to God and ask Him, Why do you allow me to come through this route when you know that you're going to see God? Because I, I just believe that if I'm going to be called, God is going to call me, I was going to come in a very good role. But I just started having this chance. Why God give me that scripture? And I know that I was created for His glory because I know that He created me for His glory. He has to take me to some certain routes that is not going to palabra for me. That's why I believe that that scripture alone, that John 9, the old scripture, I think they are from verse 1 to 36, they are just talking about me. Thank you, Benedict. Let me go to another question, and then we're going to just build from one to the other. In what way have you discovered that you are like Jesus? In what way have you discovered that you are like Christ? Anybody? In what way? We're not saying in all ways, but you have discovered that in certain ways you are like Christ. In what ways? Is there anybody here that has made that self-discovery? And I've seen the attributes of Christ manifest in them. Please share with us. Nobody? Nobody? Is there anybody here that has ever laid down his life for a friend? You are here and you have laid down your life for a friend. Can you share with us? If there are no hands up, if we are not, <laughs> then it means we, 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 have a, we have a lot of work to do. It means we have a long way to go yet. Uh, is, that, is it Benedict raising his hand or you raise it, you put it down, raise it, you put it down. I'm not sure what you're doing. Are you raising your hand? What are you doing? Yeah, yes. Yeah, make it brief, Benedict. Uh, I think um, uh, in one way, I've seen Jesus 
how will I put this out? I see myself living life for someone because in terms of financial situation, I've seen myself denying myself of some certain issues that have to do with financial issues and give it to a friend. It's a little bit more than denying yourself. Yeah. Denying yourself might be incidental. When you lay down your life, is more than incidental. But lay, lay down life is not a thing of just once. It's a continual process. We have to continue laying down our life. You can't just do it once and don't do it again. But, but I want to know what you mean. I mean, I'll laying down someone's life is not just a thing that will just happen and we we'll just leave it like that. As a, fo as, a follower, as a follower of Christ, you must continue laying down your life. Benedict, Benedict, most, I, don't want, I don't want any theoretical construct in it. I want an actual. I'll get that straight to someone else. Uh, Edward, here. Uh, I don't want any theories. I don't want any principles of it. Practical, you know, I mean, the whole construct that we have in Healing Wings is of a practical Christianity. In what way have you laid down your life for somebody else? Just tell us. Uh, in what way have you seen the attributes of Christ in your life? Just tell us. Edward, here. You have the mic. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, for example, uh, the, there is a scripture that uh, Jesus Christ talk about in the Bible. Talk about turning to the other cheek okay. when someone stops you. And uh, you know that scripture. At one point, the scripture was fulfilled in my life, and uh, that is something that I have never had before I met the Lord. You know, accepted somebody slapping me on one cheek, and I did not react by turning the other cheek for the person to hit me. You turn the other and told him to slap you on the other one. Yeah, but because of my encounter with Jesus and the life that Jesus Christ talked about and he required me to live is to be like him. And I was able to do that. That is number one. Number two. I had a brother, my biological brother. When we are growing up, we live together. And uh, I was trying to upgrade myself going to school. And this brother did something that I swear that I will not forgive him. Then. But recently, about three years ago, when I met the Lord, I was able to forgive him, to let go. Because I tried now to be like Jesus, to live the kind of Jesus, to live the kind of life that Jesus Christ required us to live. Then something happened again. That was before this lockdown, although it was clear, very clear to me that there is going to be a lockdown. And before the lockdown, I was sick for about a week. I was at home. And somebody cried to me for help, despite the fact that at that critical time, I needed a help financially. But I was able to sacrifice that, not minding that there was nothing at home for me to take care of my family. But based on that, God was faithful. And I will tell you that God has, you know, rewarded me based on that sacrifice. 
So that is just the few I can mention for now because of time. We, we mentioned quite a few. Uh, 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 were you surprised when you when you did some of these things? Did it surprise you? You mean the Lord? No, I'm talking about what you did. Did you did you, were you surprised when somebody <laughs> slapped you and you didn't react? Did it surprise you that you did not react? Yes. So you surprised? It was no, I'm asking. I'm asking because you see, but my, my 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 limited experience is that it is the Christ in you that is doing yeah. that thing. It is the Christ in me that is doing that. Yes, and, and the Christ and Christ is doing it through me. Yes, and sometimes when he does it, we are shocked. So when he does it, we are surprised. Christ is doing it through. Thank you, my brother. My whole life. Brother Destiny. Yes, sir. Sir, sir can you hear me? Go ahead, go ahead. Okay, um, good evening, everyone that is listening. Uh, in what way are we, can we identify ourselves as Christ? Oh, oh, oh. That, I think that's the question. You, you. That with a scenario that something that happened a few months ago, there was this friend of mine that called me very late in the night. Called me, I think it's about three three a.m. and said he he's been held by the police. He's coming from a vigil. That's what he said. He said he went for a vigil, and then he's been held by. The police somewhere within Elasso, and I live that was where I was while I was still in, in Jack and Lake. So, um, giving knowing where I live as a then, the places would be very rough. When I mean rough, it's difficult to walk late in the night. But he called me between three, and there was a friend that was in my house also with me. And the person told me not to go out, but because I have already the, his call has already woken me up. I was restless. Two things were in my mind. If I go out, what if something happens to me at this 3 a.m. because I want to go and meet this guy? Because what he said was that the police are saying that they need somebody to come and identify him that he lives within, and he, he wasn't having any idea, he lives within Ilasso, within Jack and the exit. And so I was the person that came to his mind to call. So I was, I, I started contemplating at first what will happen, what will happen. But somehow, I have this peace that is my friend. Whatever happens, I need to go out. I should go out. So God helped me. And I was able to leave the house. So I stepped out. When I got down, I tried to call another friend who lives a few blocks from my block. It's just a few blocks. I called him. He didn't respond. So I started going. But because he has heard me, he has, he did the, the second person I called, he heard my voice. I, then his wife peeped from the window and saw me on the street. His wife said, Brother Destiny, Brother Destiny, what's, what's happening? I said, I need to see the husband. So the husband made me bet. I feel that's an act of crime, but we have to walk. The distance was like walking from maybe like Festival Road to like Mobile. At that hour, of, because at that point, we, 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 we couldn't drive. We couldn't move. So we walk to go and rescue him. We got there, talked with the police. We know him. He's our neighbor. He lives in our area. He said he's coming from a village. Say where they found him, blah, 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 all of that. But because we came, they released him to us. I think that is one. Another angle I can look at is deny yourself. Sometimes deny yourself your pleasure, your, your sleep. Like recently now, we've been praying. I was talking with someone who I said that. Uh, I've not seen you join this prayer, blah, 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 blah. But he then said, um, what his response was, why should we pray knowing that this uh, coronavirus is the finger of God? We should, and we, it has not, it's not affecting us. God has just, so I told him the reason why we have to pray is because we are not affected. Okay, the reason why we have to pray is because people are affected. People are going through agony. People are going through pain. 
so that is the very reason why we have and now you set up you you, you set up these prayer uh, vigils one hour is 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 an act of christ you know you could just stay in your house and sleep being awake for that one hour to ask god to intervene to call upon god mess god mercy the healing power of god you know it is it's what jesus does it's an act of christ you know, we know that we have power with God. Jesus understands that he has power with God. So we are exercising our authority in God. We are asking God, like touching heaven and changing earth. So we are, we are, we are like standing in the gap. Jesus, now there's an account that says that he's the medi- there's, there's only one mediator between man and God. And that is Christ Jesus. There are instances where God wants us to stand in the gap like Jesus. Hold on, hold on, hold on, listen, hold on, hold on, hold on a minute. There is only one mediator between God between and, man, and yes. man, Christ Jesus, right? Yes. But you are yes. not Christ Jesus. Sir? But you are now in Christ Jesus. So we are also like Jesus. You are now mediate. Yes. Yes. You are now in Christ Jesus. You are not separate from Christ. You are one with Christ. Christ. Yes. Okay. So don't 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 say you know. I mean, you're no you're no longer different. He doesn't see you different anymore. It's like how husband how 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 God sees a husband and his wife. He doesn't see two people. He sees one. You are now one with Christ, so you can mediate. Okay. So that, that, that's the same thing I'm trying to say. Maybe I didn't put it. That's the same thing I'm saying now. We stand in that. So when you take this kind of step, you are now at one. You know, that's where God is comes where, where our minds are knitted to him. We are at one. We can see the way Jesus sees. We're able to reason the way he reasons. Even though there is darkness, we should, we are people who are called to see the light, even in the darkness. So we, we, are, we are like Christ. Okay. And then the fourth question you ask, which of the disciples can you identify with? I think I, my, maybe my own case should be the worst. In different times, I'm identified to different of the apostles. Sometimes I wonder. Sometimes I'm a Thomas. Sometimes I'm just not believing. Sometimes I'm, I'm, I'm seeing myself like Peter. Sometimes I'm just wondering. Sometimes I'm like Mary. The one who is busy with other things. You know, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not focused. God wants you to be here. You're looking at other things. You're looking at other things. And so I'm the blind Bartimaeus. But however, there's one thing that has kept me on track. The mercy of God. The mercy of God. God has always shown me that he's here. Even when you feel that he's far away. You feel that he's not very close, but he has always been with us. He has always reminded me. Sometimes I've just lost sight. All right, all right. We just come in and tap. So that, that, that's it. In different ways. Right. We are like Christ. I want us to move forward. Thank you. I, I would prefer it if you don't let your, your, your submissions be too long. There are quite a number of issues that I want us to discuss. So I don't want us to take too much time on one, on one submission. Now, can you give one thing? I need somebody here. Can you give one thing that you know for sure is written in the Bible concerning you? What are you sure is testified of you in the scriptures? Anybody? One thing that is written in the Bible concerning you. What is that one thing? One thing you know that the Bible testifies of you. Sometimes one thing you know, according to the statement of Jesus, the Bible says that as he is, so are we in this lifetime. He says everything that is written about him will be fulfilled. What is it that you know that is written about you that is even yet to be fulfilled, but that will be fulfilled? That must be fulfilled because it is written.
Anybody? I can't see any hands yet. Does the Bible testify about you? What does it testify? Edward E. Karen, do you want to, do you have something to say? To move mountains. Karen, do you have written... to move oh, pardon? Go ahead, go ahead. Did you hear the first part? No, we didn't. I'm just, I'm just switching on now. Okay. It is written of me that on the day of judgment, I shall not be found wanting. It is written of me that I am a woman of strong faith, the faith to move mountains. It is written of me that God is passionate about me. He will not leave me until I am like him. I don't have any choice in the matter. It is written of me that the Lord blesses the works of my hands. Those are just some of the things. Thank you very much. Okay, to you. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Yeah, one of the things that I can remember that has been fulfilled in my life uh, that is written in the scripture is uh, the incident where Jesus Christ was invited to a wedding. And in that wedding, they ran out of wine and uh, Jesus Christ appeared and he was able to perform a miracle by, you know, turning water to wine. And this was fulfilled in 2006, precisely December, when I wanted to get married, my wedding. And <laughs> I will tell you that that scripture was fulfilled in my life because I got to the end of my strength, where it looks if it's not going to work out. But on that Friday night, before my wedding on Saturday, fr Friday morning, I was crying to God, and God told me that stop praying, just praise me, <laughs> just praise me. And uh, I, I, I called my, my wife then, uh, uh, who I married today. I said, this is what God is telling me. And he said, praise. What do you mean? God said we should praise him by this time. Where is the food? Where is the water? Where is this? I said, God said we should just praise him. And the wedding that we are not even sure on that Saturday, the food that we are not even sure on that Saturday, God has to cancel somebody's wedding, somebody's program to make that food available for me. And the food that we are not sure as at that Saturday became surplus on that Sunday. Became surplus. There's a big man that the caterer that we have discussed with, you no, know, we have agreed with, that's supposed to cook for us on that Saturday. As at that Friday, there was no money to give to that caterer. There was no money. But the big man that he was supposed to also cook for that Saturday have to call her and told her that, sorry, my party will no longer hold on that Saturday. So everything that the caterer has purchased to cook for that big man, he converted everything for me. And the food was surplus on Saturday. And people ate, and there was still a leftover. So that scripture was fulfilled in my life that day. I was at your wedding, so I can testify to that. I, I was at your wedding. I had a, I, I don't even remember. I think I had a bar and a, and a, um, a goosey. <laughs> I was at your wedding. Glory be to God. That's a powerful testimony. <laughs> That's a powerful testimony. Listen, uh, my next question. I want us. I want to see a show of hands. 
Huh? I want to see a show of hands before we go into the specificity of it. If a new edition of the Bible were to be written today, would you be in it? If you think, if you are sure you will be in it, let me see your hand up. That is, if you say, if you say a new edition of the Bible will be written today, would you be in it? Huh? If you if you are convinced that you would be in it, let me see your hand up. I only see two hands now. Hmm? Would you be in it? Would you be in it? Four hands. Would you be there? Five hands. Six hands. Seven. Any other hands? Would you just be a character? Would you just be a character in it? Huh? Or would a whole book be written about you? Would a whole book be devoted to you? I want to see a show of hands. Would a whole book be devoted to you? Would the book be called your name? That is, what book will be called Comfort Yangan? Some book will be called Comfort and Benza Kuzengu. Would your book have part one, part two? Would your book be first destiny echo, part one, second destiny echo? And people will read it, they will say first Daniel, second Daniel, first Festus, second Festus. Put your hands down. Let us be specific now. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. Put your hands down. All you that have put your hands up, put your hands down. I'm going to I'll call you one by one. Huh? Put your hands down. Put your hands down. With the new edition of the Bible, would you record a blunder that you made or a victory that you achieved? Those of you that put your hands down, tell me. Would it record a blunder that you made? Or would it record a victory? that you achieved. If you put your hands up before, don't run away now. Don't run away, because I can remember you. I'll start calling you one by one. What will be recorded in your book? Debbie, do you want to say something? Break the Lord. Hallelujah. Edward, go ahead. Okay. Uh, about faith. Are you hearing me, sir? I can hear you, yes. You? Remember my question. Would you recall uh, faith, a faith. or a victory? I'm not just asking you to tell any story. Would you Praise be a, lot. a blunder or a victory? Yes or no? To start with, which one? Yes or no? I didn't get you. Which one? Which one? Okay. okay, can you get me now? We are talking about faith now. Tell the people behind you to stop talking. There are some children behind you that are disturbing. Would it record a blunder? Or would you record a victory? You are taking too long. I'll come back to you. Benzak. Benzak, was it good? Think, yes, sir. I, yeah. I think it will reflect, it will record a blunder for me. What is the blunder? Um, the reason the reason why I said it records a blunder for me is because I believe that God's strength is made perfect in our weakness. Um, if you look at the story of the Bible, most of the people who celebrate, you will find out that they, they also made so many blunders. Um, Abraham made blunders. Um, David, David made blunders. Solomon made blunders. But at the end of the day, if you look at the end of the story, it was from those blunder out of the ashes 
of their dying that God now created something beautiful. Um, so out of the ashes of our dying today, I see the glory of the Lord rising up. So I think for me, God will record my blunder, which in those days, I used to be ashamed of them. I didn't want God to record my blunder. In fact, I remember one time I went to a church in Joss and the um, gentleman who was preaching not started picking people one by one and saying things said that God said, God wanted to say about them. I started begging God, please, God, please, oh, don't, don't, don't go by me today. Ah, please, please, don't say anything about me. Just hide me. But over time, I've come to appreciate my scars. The reason why I appreciate them is because when I look back, I see where God is bringing me from. I see that despite my mistake, God has been good to me. So for me, I would rather that he even records my blunders. But if after recording my blunder, then you should record what he did with the blunder. So that's, that's my own um, take on it. Thank you, Ben Zach. I hope you know we cannot even see you. Why? Your, your, your video is, 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 is blocked. Uh, I, can see, I can see Destiny's hand. What are Destiny? Sir. Uh, for me, I think, like Ben Zach just said, it will start with a blunder. And there would also be written in the Bible that destiny is a lover of men. Lover of men as in a lover of God. The blunders, the blunders will be much. Um, yeah, one blunder with us, destiny. Okay, I would, let me just site quickly cite one or two uh when one, yes, one, one. when we were at loose when we when we got when they refer us from mercy hospital to you when i got when I got to loot what happened to me was that i, I got to loot with i think about i had this so now when what do you think of the deep blunder of the second drive blunder when we were, so when I got that first, before they admitted, they asked me to pay for some few things, buy them, go around. When I went around, I saw somebody who was calling at the pay point where you had to make payments. And the person was supposed to pay a certain amount of money. And I heard from myself that I should pay for the person. I should give the person, pay the person bill for the pizza, for the, for the uh, things he needed for the hospital because somebody I knew before I just jumped the person in the hospital for years, but I, I I couldn't do it. I couldn't do it because I couldn't do it because I was counting on what I had. I was looking at what I had in my pocket. I was telling myself, even what I have, I don't know if it's enough. Or I felt that should be able to do what I had to do in the hospital and leave. But so I struggled and did not pay. I didn't give the person the money. I couldn't pay. I left. The person bought the few things, went back, gave them. After they've admitted that they just asked me to go and do one test. When I went to do the test, I came back. The first test they asked me to do was about 17,000. Two tests I did, like three. So the money I had finished. When the money I had finished, I didn't know what to do. I just went and sat somewhere and started crying. A lot of thoughts were in my mind because I was depending on what I had. But I lost sight of God at that point, that my, if I had left his thoughts in my front forehead, if I was thinking of him, there was no way I wouldn't have taken out of what I have and resolved the person problem, knowing that God is my sufficiency. He would always make a way. But because I was, I was, I was doubtful, I did not, I did not, I did not obey the word. But however, the mercy of God still located me because God raised people. Use Festus. Started with Festus. Festus called and said, what's going on? I said, ah, this is what's going on. Oh, I, I've just done this thing. Oh, and I'm, I'm, I'm on zero level. And the other test, they asked me, so he sent me some money. How God used different people to pay the hospital bills for me. So there are plenty of blunders. And that's we always do that when we when we when we lose sight of God, when we think 
we have this, we are the solution. We are the solution, but we really we are we are not. I ate a in one of the instances in the hospital when they told me I have to donate blood. I felt that blood, I'll just go and donate blood. When I went there, when they took my blood sample, they said, Oh God, you are shutting blood, you can't donate blood. But I was I I has I, I was feeling that hey, she's losing blood, it's blood. I, I I can donate my own blood. I really sometimes you feel that what you have can keep you. You are counting on your own account, but we really, we really don't know what God is up to. And in many instances, we we'll, we'll miss, we we'll miss out like that. I think that's that. My own, but that's my own big blunder. It's still ringing, it keep ringing in my head. It keep ringing in my head. But um, that's it. Praise the Lord. Thank you very much. Uh, you, have been, you have been such a blessing tonight. Anybody else? The Bible we are reading tonight, or reading a, a new edition written today. Would you recall the blunder that you made? The blunder that you made that would instruct others. Anybody else? I was talking, I was talking to Benzak earlier on today. And we we're talking about Peter. And Peter denying Jesus. And the discussion got to the point where we concluded that the reason why he denied Jesus was because of us. We concluded that he denied Jesus because of us. Because he needed, God needed somebody to send the message to us. That we should not do that. Yes, first us. Okay, um, good evening. You also, I, I know if they have to record anything about me, it will be the same blunder because, um, most of the time is, is, um, our weakness that God use to identify our strength. So, uh, if you want to record anything, you record most of my blunder when I was done just, just to believe in Him, but I, I feel that no, uh, uh, um, God, I, 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 most of the time, you not even remember most of the things that you have, have done in your life before. But when you talk about healing, I have seen God, I have seen God's healing every single time that I ask for healing. But sometimes when you see some sickness, you know, you, you won't you just start doubting ah god are, are you sure this one you will heal you know you start thinking you have different thoughts have this on this side this on this side like my sister when she was diagnosed with s i was telling her, ah, god this girl you know when you are praying that spirit that is telling you that this is a different sickness so it's not headache that you pray for someone it's not stomach that you pray for someone you know, then you are thinking different thing. But you discover that he can heal any kind of sickness. There is nothing that he cannot heal. But first of all, we will first have to, you know, struggle, even to pray. We first have to struggle, say, God, please, I know I, you know, you can do this. You know, that that's Z of the way we pray when we need something, we know that this one is sure banker. Mm -mm. We'll be praying this song, we'll be saying, Oh God, you know, I know you can do so, 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 but you know. So, those are the things that I know that we record. And God will put all those issues, doubting, and so many things that were wrong about me. But I know at the end of it, people will also be able to learn from it that even though I doubt God, He still heals, He still take, He still continues to even heal. Even at that particular time, that I didn't believe that he would do so. So is 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 the is the blunder that they will record. The floodgates. Thank you, thank you, Professor. Let, let's open the floodgates. Huh? What major testimonies in your life would be in that in, in, in that in that new edition of the Bible? Huh? What what calling Lazarus out of the grave? I mean, some major testimony in your life. Just give us one. Summarize it briefly. That must be in the Bible. That must be in the Bible. That this is what God is doing 
today. Have you seen a, a mighty work of God in your life? That you say, yes, this is Bible material. Let's ask, first of all, from Daniel Lekaraga. Yeah, <clears throat> I will not say it's um, what, the greatest or the biggest or the mightiest, but I think it's something that has made a huge impact in my life. And it happened, you know, way back when I was still um, a student, uh, uh, schooling in Unibank. Um, you know, I've had different um, encounters with God, but this one was different because um, for some reason, I found myself in an association that I shouldn't be in. And all the way God was with me, you know, by joining the secret court, I mean, God was with me all the way that I know to a point where he, 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 he arranged um, situations to fall in a situation um, in a way that I had to, in the end, come back to him when there was nowhere else to go, when there was no one else to turn to, when my life became a, a living hell, literally, because of um, the freedom I lost and so many other things. And I thank God for who he is. But the testimony really is about something that happened. There were two brothers who I had spoken to because when I was a courtist, I played a major role. And um, I had spoken to them and done an interview for them for their initiation and all that. In fact, I was the one that literally was bringing them in. And God told me specifically to go and preach to those same brothers. After I had encountered him and made me pray for three days, um, um, the third day after my prayer and the fasting, God, I heard him straight. He said I should go to the house of those, those boys and I should go and talk to them. And I understood why, because those were the first people ever since I was in the court that I'd ever spoken to to become members because we were required to bring people anyway. So I went to their house and, and I met them both. And one of them had his girlfriend in the house, Anita, I remember her name. And I spoke to them, you know, I was just preaching. And they were like, what, ah, what, ah, you are the one, you are, because of you want to join this thing. So it was a thing of, no, it's too late. So I'm telling them, don't join this thing. And they were telling me it is already too late that I already made them fall in love with the thing and all that. So it was a big issue. They, they couldn't believe me, you know. So call long story short. The girlfriend there started screaming at one corner and she was really in pain. So I tried to find out what was wrong. They told me she had um, ulcer. I was chronic ulcer and that she has had the case and all that. I said, okay, fine. While she was lamenting and crying, me, I, I, I didn't know anything about ulcer. I didn't know what to do in that situation. She didn't have her drugs or her medication, so she requested for milk and all that. They said they didn't have all that in the house. So she said, okay, they should just give us something. So they brought Panadol, and they brought water to give to this girl. And I told them, what would Panadol do? You're talking also, you're giving her Panadol. So I advised them not to give her Panadol. They, they, she was, she insisted because she was really in pain. So I told them, okay, you know what? Give me the, and this is, this is not me talking now because to be frank, something else, I knew that it was God at that point. So, okay, give me the glass of water. They gave me the glass of water. I prayed into the glass of water and I, I asked her permission if I could lay the hand on her stomach. And she said, go ahead, whatever, you know. She was in pain anyway. The guys were the ones that responded on her behalf. So I put my hand on her stomach and prayed for her, very brief, you know, gave her the water, asked her to drink the water, and she drank the water. After that um, experience, even though the guys, they were still like, okay, okay, they would think about what I just said and all that. When it was six, I told them I had to go and break my fast, and I left them. And I didn't see either of them or the girl till maybe the previous week, um, the week, uh, you know. So I went for a fellowship on a Monday evening. And to my surprise, um, 
I saw this girl, Anita, with like four or five other girls. She said they were her roommates. So they waited after they, they joined the fellowship. After the fellowship, um, it was then they now told me, they me to, I was seeing them off to their room. And they now told me what happened. Anita told me that same day that when I laid my hand on her stomach, that she felt an electric feeling, a vibration from the from her head all the way to the, you know, to her toes and all that. That that when she drank the water, she got the same feeling. And she said instantly, the pain stopped. But I had left by the time she opened her eyes. But she wasn't sure. She thought that, okay, maybe it's just one of those reliefs that you get. That it was three days after that she now came on the Monday and to say she hasn't felt anything. She's been eating and all that. So we just glorified God. But in my mind, I was sick praying to God, say, look, this testimony will be permanent. And as I speak, until she left, or until I left Tunibel, until we parted, she never had a case of ulcer. And I just want to glorify God for that. Because I know that everything, this whole situation, God had worked it to, one, show me something um, about myself to to tell those other guys more like a sign to those guys that he sent me to for them to understand the power because after that moment those guys the person although they eventually still joined the course it's not as if it stopped them from joining on their own but everything about their perspective of life changed from that moment and i thank god for that how do you know their yeah that's it how do you know their perspective of life changed Zep? How do you know their perspective of life changed? Yeah, because eventually, even though they joined um, the courts on their own, because we didn't, I didn't see them after a while, but later they got to know what happened. And with time, these same um, brothers, they were regretting, you know, their joint, and they started, you know, running away, dodging, you know what I mean, and avoiding the auntie they, they eventually left school. So it was like the passion had died, the experience had died, especially when they, had, they started seeing me preach and all that, you know. So I understand after that, they weren't really deep into the whole thing until they pulled out eventually. That I know. I mean, it really doesn't matter. I mean, you've done, you've done what God told you to do. I mean, whether, whether they... they, they... They will be or not is, is, is really their business. You have done what God sent you to do. Thank God for that. That's a powerful testimony. That's a powerful testimony. I mean, this is how God operates, you know, I mean, when he needs to really demonstrate himself. And uh, we have everybody here again. Uh, we are having the same people, and I need some more, some new people. I mean, this is, look, uh, the more testimonies you give, the more testimonies you get. Yes, please, everyone, go ahead. First, the Lord. Hallelujah. Okay, there. You see, uh, testimony is about the miracles, the miracles of God's power. And uh, I have seen diverse miracles, and I have also experienced diverse miracles in the different perspective of life of what God can do and is doing it in my life. When I joined Healing Wings many years ago and I come across a covenant that God made with the church that whosoever you touch and pray for are we healed. And I connect to that covenant. I connect to that covenant. And God is faithful. God has used my hand to raise the dead. Not once, not two, not three. And in fact, something happened five years ago in my village. There's a train that was in the front of my father's compound. And part of the train as you know, extended to my father's compound. And this train become a god to the community. And some of the villagers in the community we are worshiping this train. And when I come to know the Lord, 
And any time I traveled home, I am not comfortable seeing that train. And five years ago, you know, I comes about the 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 the, the, the scripture where Jesus Christ calls the, the, the fig train and the fig train wither. And I said, Jesus said to me that the work that I do, that I, Edward E. can also do it. And I went in the middle of the night, 2 a.m. I was praying around the train in my father's compound. And the following morning, some of the villagers gathered and then came to my compound to tell my mother to warn me that they don't want me to die, that nobody has ever tried what I was doing that night. And my mother, at one point, she became afraid. And I told my mother, I said, I know who I am now. And I know who I believed. I said, Jesus Christ, that lives in me, is greater than that dream. And today, as I speak to you, to short, to cut the whole story short, that dream has withered. <laughs> that dream that people worship has withered. That God is no longer there. And today, because of that thing that God used me to do, in fact, I got to a church one day, they were asking me to lay hand on people to bless them. So the fig train that Jesus calls to death was also fulfilled in my life mm. by that train. So what am I trying to say? Yeah. Go God has given us a covenant in healing wings, and we need to connect to that covenant. We need to connect to that covenant. We are under the coverage of that covenant, and we must begin to exercise it. Until we begin to exercise it, we will not realize the power that God has deposited in us. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. My brother, I, 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 I wonder if you know that early in the, in the life of this ministry, somebody died during a fellowship. I don't know whether you've heard this story before. We came to a fellowship, and in the middle of the fellowship, this woman ran out. Apparently, she had an asthma attack. And after some 30 minutes, some three women ran out after her. And I didn't see anything again for another 30 minutes. And they came and told me while I was preaching that the woman was dead. They've been trying to revive her for 30 minutes. She was gone. And the whole church moved to the room where she was. And we started praying. We started praying. We prayed. We prayed. We prayed. And I told the Lord, I said, I don't know what to pray again. I've used all the scriptures I know. I was a baby Christian. And the Lord spoke to me. He said, Femi, pray in tongues. And when I heard his voice, I knew that something was, off, whoa, 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 something was in the office. And then as I was praying in tongues, this woman just sneezed. And then she opened her eyes. And then she sat up. And then we held her up. And we went back to the fellowship room and we started dancing. And we started dancing, we started praising God. And she sat down, the Lord said, tell her to join the dance. And this woman that had passed got up and started dancing with us. Celestina, I saw your hand up. Yeah, yes, uh, doctor, but I can't talk anymore because my, my son just woke up. I'm trying to make no him problem. sleep. No problem. <laughs> I'm sorry. No problem. Festus. Festus. Yes, I can hear you, sir. Yes, um, I have uh, one, also it's a healing testimony uh, during the, um, the time of um, Pastor Jerry. We're doing, that was my first fasting. 
they're doing fasting um, for dry fasting for three days. So, and it was my first fasting on the first day. It was good. On the second day, I become so weak. Uh, I start calling uh, Emmanuel the little and destiny to come and stay with me. Because I was afraid <laughs> maybe something will happen to me. But something happened in the compound where we live in VI. Um, my neighbor brought his um, old man from the village uh, to treat him. I don't know the I don't know the kind of sickness, but I I, I had people crying outside. That man is terribly sick. And the, 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 the son was not around. I come outside. I managed myself to come outside, even though I was very weak. And God said I should lay hands on this man. I just walked two steps. Then I lay hands on him. I don't know whether I pray because I was very weak. Even though I, I say something, I'm not sure someone will hear me. But something happened. After five minutes, that I pray for him, this man stand up and he asks for water. So the man, the, the son, the wife run to me and say, ah, that her, her father-in-law is up now, no. That is only he even asks for water and he asks for food. And from that point, See, the, 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 the man left Lagos, okay, returned back to the village. You know, he didn't complain about anything. I was very happy because uh, maybe it was my <laughs> the first time that that kind of thing will happen to me. And I have to go and tell Pastor Jerry that, you know, I was so excited. This fasting was not for, maybe it was not for healing, but for something else. But God converted it to heal somebody. So I, I believe in my in my life, that was my first testimony that I can, I'll be able to say as I healed someone. Thank you very much, Festus. I want us to contextualize this discussion. We've been projecting, we said, you know. If the Bible were to be written today, what would be in it? Will it testify about us? Will it talk about us? Uh, let me call, uh, before I continue, let me call um, Chuchu, are you raising your hand? Uh, no, Lillian is raising her hand, Infinix S4. Uh, I can't see her on the screen. Can you can you put her on? Okay. You can tell her to talk. All right, Lillian, please go ahead. We can't see you again. We are seeing you before, Lillian. We can hear you. Good evening, everyone. Good evening. Yeah, it was a, a testimony. Go ahead. Yeah, my testimony was about healing. Okay. When God healed me, when I had my surgery, the surgery was uh, actually bloodless. Because when I went to the doctor, the doctor told me that he was not going to use blood. I was afraid. I started asking other doctors, making inquiries. And there was nobody I asked that said no or said, there was nobody I asked that said it was possible. They all said there was no way I would do surgery without blood. I needed blood. But when I went to that doctor, the doctor assured me that he was going to do it without blood. And the surgery was three in one. And to tell you, he did it without blood and it was successful. And today I am fine. Praise the Lord. <laughs> Hallelujah. Thank you very much for that. I said I wanted to contextualize the discussion. Uh, we've been talking, we've been projecting about what would happen if the Bible were, if the, a new edition of the Bible were to be written today. 
But now we are in the middle of something today. If the Bible were to be written, what would they say about us in the middle of this current crisis? What would be the testimony? What would be, what would be written in the Bible about this coronavirus crisis? First of all, do you think it would be in the Bible? Number two, if it would be in the Bible, what would it say about you? What would be your testimony in the middle of this crisis? Anybody? One day. I, you turn him on because I can't see him on the screen. Okay. Okay, you can call him. Okay, one day, go ahead. Yeah, I was going to I was going to talk about the chapter in the Bible where my name is, where my where it will be written about me. Can okay. you hear me? We can hear you. Yeah. All right. Yeah. Um, your one of your favorite passages is in Psalm, if I remember. Many are the afflicted. Many are the afflictions of the righteous. But the Lord delivered him from them all. I've been afflicted over and over and over again. And like the psalmist, there would have been a series of meditation on my part, series of depression, and then standing up again, and then falling down, and then standing up again, especially because of the afflictions I faced. So when you were talking about blunders written about me, I was going to say those are my blunders. So many blunders would have been written about me of how many times I fell through my life journey. But I could also thank God that the victory is there because I survived it all by the grace of God. So many are my afflictions in life. But I thank God for my family. I thank God for my, I thank God for healing wings. I thank God for everybody that I know that my situation is better and um, God has a new history for me. So that's what I was going to say that, that my name will be written in a new edition of the Bible by the grace of God. Yeah. And my, my testimony will be blunders and also victory. Thank you. Thank God for that one day. Yes, what will be written about you? Concerning this crisis, what would be written about you concerning this crisis? Or what would you like to be written about you concerning this coronavirus crisis? What would be said about your faith in the middle of this crisis? Destiny. Destiny. Uh, yes. Uh, for me, I think what will be written about about me will be that against all hope, we believe God, like the three Hebrew children yeah. that believe God that even if He does not save them, they will not. They will still trust God, even if God. Yeah changes his mind that he's not sending deliverance at this point, they will still believe in God. They will still trust God. Yeah, I think that would be written about some of us. Uh, uh, we, stand, we stood in the gap. And we know that this coronavirus, we are not, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not better than, I'm using, I'm talking about myself. I'm not better than, and a lot of people who are dying all over the world. Your reception is bad. The message. Your reception is bad. Destiny. Let's go to Bezak. And I keep. Destiny, your reception is bad. 
is my That's defense, that. is my shelter, is my provision, is my need. If it is really a means for my exit from here to him, fine. Because the people who who stood Sir, um, from the first day that I heard about the coronavirus, is that in Nigeria, I have done it, I have maintained it, and I'll keep it. So, for me, I believe reaching. Text that I am man of the world. I've said it. I don't have died, but I still don't believe it's corona. Your voice is breaking. You're not hearing me. No, your voice is breaking. Oh, okay, can you hear me now? Yes, go on. Because I've changed my position. Is it better? Yeah. So for me, I believe that. And then secondly, I think what you will be written up also is that. Um, during this period of the coronavirus, I've also taken out time um, once, maybe every two or three days. Lessons that God had taught me in the past, in, in time past, I have tried to put them down in writing, and I've been sharing them on my wall, and I'm using that as a to evangelize because people are at home. In fact, I've used it to even advise people that instead of at home, wasting their time, in movies and all, that you use it as a time to sit down and reflect on their lives, to reflect on, on what they want to achieve on their life, find out where they are making mistakes and where, they're, uh, where there are some errors in their life. So for me, I think that was first and foremost. I all right, thank you, Benzad. Thank you, Benzad. We are struggling to meet with you. Thank you. Thank you. Comfort. Oh, good evening. Speak up. Can you hear me? Speak up, speak up. Those can you hear me? Okay. Um, what would be written consigned or uh, written of me during this period would be that um, even when I think I've seen the worst. <laughs> In my life, I've gone through the worst situation. I think this has actually shown that this is the worst so far. And then, and this is the time I am seeing God, though we are still in the process of something. So it will be written that my faith grew stronger because now I'm um, seeing things that, or I'm taking directions from God and I'm taking instructions from God instead of just out of my own common sense, do things. I'm now learning to take directions from God and I'm hearing him clearer now in this period. I'm learning to, he's actually removing anxiety and fear of the unknown from me because that has always been my issue. And um, this period is just me and Jesus time and he's healing all of those from me. So it's written that my faith grew stronger. Thank you to God. <laughs> he gave uh, good day, sir. Good day. If if uh, this uh, coronavirus uh, period was written about in the Bible, it would say that I was the one that went to tell Jesus that um, ten people died of of corona in uh, Lagos. But you tell me, what about the people that died in Italy? Over one thousand people. That unless I go and repent, that um, I will suffer the same fate. So because of that, I've, I've decided to look at the, to start implementing the ministry that he gave me over 15 years ago, because at that time he gave me, for the first time since I met him, after like two years after I met the Lord, he, 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 he put a pressure on my heart to fast for the first time. And I fasted for two days. 
on the on the after I fasted for two days, the third day I had a dream two nights consecutively, and the the second dream has to do with uh, the ministry he gave me, whereby he he said I should go and preach his word, and uh, since that time I've been I've been delaying and all kinds of reasons. I'm not ready. I don't know a lot. I, I this and that. So. I think this period has brought that in focus for me because um, it's as if the Lord used it to. There's a way this uh, this crisis affected me, so it's it's forced me to look at look at what He told me so many years ago, and I need to start working on it because there might not be a tomorrow. So that's that's what we've written about me in the, in the scriptures. Thank you very much. Thank you very much. Good evening, sir. Good evening, sir. <laughs> so, sir, I, I, I don't know. I want to try and bring you, bring you back a bit. Two, two um, weekly service, two week se um, weekly services that we had. Um, the first one where you addressed uh, the camera, and then the next one you addressed the reason why we are alive or the, uh, what we want to fulfill on planet earth and then you when i said that i wanted to grow um get to a certain level of my career you you, you said that's a waste of time you know and then fast forward to the next week this covid 19 placed everybody at home and then, <laughs> and then it it for me it, it showed there was a prophecy, and then it, 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 it for me it tells me that anything is going to be written of me in the scriptures tomorrow. That anything that is going to happen, God will speak to me about it first before it happens. Because immediately you said it as of today, our HR started sending letters to people telling them that they have to go on compulsory we leave. So this is the end of how people's career will just go. I mean, some of them they are currently losing their jobs. They are currently, I mean, well, what's the alternative for them currently? Nothing, you know, in this kind of terrible situation. So um, I was beforehand told, this, listen, you don't need to start doing all these things. Just go back and rely on me. And then this is what I've learned within this period. And then I'm sure that it's going to be written of me that I learned and I was foretold before it happened. Glory be to God. Celestina, can you talk now? Yes. Yes, uh, doctor, I can talk now. Yes. Um, in this uh, coronavirus situation, uh, uh, whether it's coronavirus or not, I think uh, the major thing that will be written about me in the Bible is faith. And uh, with coronavirus, coronavirus has given me a actually brought uh, given me an opportunity to to do something that I usually uh, make excuse for and not even try to and even if I do it's like for a minute and I'm like oh I have so many things to do I keep giving excuses not to do it and that's studying God's word so with coronavirus you can see me being here with you today is actually a testimony <laughs> so it's a uh, uh, it's it's one of the things that it's the Bible would say is that uh, a pl the plague actually gave me the opportunity to come to come study God's word to know more. Uh, it's it's not like knowing more about what, but knowing knowing more about His words, coming coming closer to Him, praying more uh, fervently. Which are these are things that I I hardly I hardly do, you know, because uh, the only thing is. The only, the only thing that will be written, the most important thing that will be written about me is just faith. That's all. That's the major thing. Because in my life, uh, faith is what has been seeing me through my entire life. If, I, I don't know most of the things that God does to me. I do not deserve them one bit. But somehow he just does it. Somehow he makes a way. Somehow he heals. Somehow he, do, he just does everything for me. Without praying, without reading his words, without nothing, I just I just have faith in his words, especially where he said, if a mother, he said, does a mother forget her own child? And even if she does, I will never forget you. That's the I think that's what's just uh, that's what helps me because when I think about God's love as a mother to uh, to a child, 
then I, I more or less I have nothing to worry about. Like coronavirus issue, I'm not worried about it. So I'm actually not really sure what they are going to write about me in the Bible. But I think the major thing they would write about me, whether it's uh, coronavirus or not, it's going to be faith. That's what I think will be written about me. And all the things that God did for me, a miserable, wretched, poor sinner. Thank you. Yeah. Last person. Everybody here. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Uh, as for me, uh, this uh, coronavirus or whatsoever it is called, I've uh, read it in the Bible before now. And uh, I know from what is written in the Bible that it's going to come one day. But I, um, I was queuing in the promise of God. God said, even though it comes, that it will not come near me Amen. and near my family. Amen. Okay. And uh, so when uh, the, the virus uh, started spraying, I was not a fear because I was, uh, I was uh, depending on, uh, on the word of God, trusting on the word of God, because God himself uh, is the word. And uh, he said, oh, none of these diseases that will come near me, near my dwelling. You understand? And, uh, and based on that, even my family, they were covered under that coverage, the covenant. So I was not scared. That is number one. And uh, number two, I've also seen God in the areas of provision. God has, uh, you know, teach me some lesson. Because uh, for some times now, uh, my business has been, uh, you know, has been challenged. It is only the day I go out that I'm sure that maybe uh, there will be provision to eat that day. But I will tell you, since this thing began, the now that I'm at home fully, over three weeks now, I'm not going to work. But I'll be eating very well, three square meat every day. And uh, even more than eating well, more than even when I'm going to work. And uh, so God <laughs> has come to teach me that he is my provision. And then uh, in fact, I'm telling you that uh, if you see me, I'm looking more better now than when I was working, when I got to work. <laughs> so God has shown me that it's my provision. Praise the Lord. And uh, the, the number three aspect of it is about entering into God's rest. So I read it in the book of uh, Hebrews chapter 4, verse 1. God talk about entering into his rest. And that door of entering into God's rest is still open to all his children, all his Christians. So and uh, at this period, I think I was, I was resting in the Lord. <laughs> I was just, you know, enjoying, secured in the presence of God. I was at rest and I was at peace. And then finally, the fourth aspect is that uh, it's been a very long time that I, I read the Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And uh, I have not been, uh, you know, great in time to study as I wanted to study. But as I speak to you now, during this period that I'm at home, eh, I started reading the Bible again from Genesis. And uh, as I speak to you now, I'm in a proverb, and I'm sure, uh, thank God that it was extended for another two, two weeks. So I will be able to cover it to Genesis before that time. And in the spending time in the study of the Word of God, and God has begun to review so many things, and I have seen God in a diverse ways of miracles. So I just want to bless God for that. Praise the Lord. Hallelujah. Thank you, thank you, the only prophet. I want to I want to end uh, my uh, session today with a with a short testimony. I want to give this testimony because sometimes we do things, and uh, we might not even be directly instructed to do them, but because Christ is in us, He causes us to do all kinds of things. And I believe that applies to this testimony because there's somebody here that God used 
at a critical time in the life of healing wings. And I've really never had the opportunity to talk to him about it, but he knows who he is. He knows who he is. I had businesses in Lagos, in Ibadan, in Port Harcourt. I had 11 outfits. And I always felt that God wanted me to close them down. But they were doing so well. I didn't want to. And he told me specifically, he said, I will never ask you to close down your businesses. And I was so pleased about this. But it took me some time to know what he meant. That even though he would never tell me to close down my businesses, I knew that he wanted me to. He wanted me to do it without his telling me. And this took me like seven or eight years. And then one day I decided to close down all my businesses in one day. I closed them down all in one day. And a few days after that, God appeared to me in a dream. And he appeared to me in the person of my old man, TSB, Ali Bissala. And he saw me and I was weeping. I said, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. He drew me to his chest and said, don't cry. I'm sending you some money next month from Canada. And I woke up. Eight days after that, I received a total of 11 million Naira. I used 8 million of it to pay, to complete the payment that I was owing the bank for the building. But the reason I'm talking to you about this is that there was one man that is here tonight. And the man walked into my office after that dream. And he had a check in his hand. And he put the check face down. And he said, the Lord said I should give you this check. And when I turned it round, it was for 6,300,000 Naira. And he said to me, he said, I saw downstairs that the equipment in the church are not acceptable. They said, use 300,000 to change the equipment. The rest, of the, six on, the rest of the six million is up to you. And I'm saying this tonight because that man did not know that the Lord had appeared to me in a dream. I have not told him until now. He did not know that the Lord had appeared to me in a dream and told me, I'm sending you some money next month from Canada. I don't still understand the Canadian equation. But I want to thank God for him. And I want to use him as a point of contact for so many people that are here. There are so many things that you are doing. So many righteous things that, are, that you are doing. So many kind things that you are doing. So many loving things that you are doing. So many people that you are helping. So many people that you are encouraging. So many people that you are lifting up. But you did not know that it was Christ in you that was doing the work. He didn't tell you, he didn't instruct you directly. Just continue doing them. Because they are the things that validate who you are. And that's why I know and I believe with you that of the truth, if the Bible was written today, you would definitely be in it. You would definitely be in it. Let us pray. Thank you, Father. Father, I want to thank you for every person that is here tonight. I want to thank you because there's no coincidences in this, in, in, in this world. Everything is by you. Your people are here tonight 
because you brought us, as you brought people into the ark, so have you brought them into the ark of Jesus tonight. To hear, Father Lord God Almighty, what you are doing. To encourage us in the middle of this crisis. To give us fresh hope. Not new hope, fresh hope. That we may be renewed, O oh God, in you. That we may regain strength from you. And so, Lord God Almighty, I thank you because tonight, I say the scriptures are fulfilled in your people. In the name of Jesus. For every Bartimaeus, oh God, I say their eyes may open now. In the name of Jesus. For every deaf person, Lord, they start to hear from you now. In the name of Jesus. For every person that is sick, in mind, in body, in spirit, because your name is Jesus, I declare and I decree that they receive healing now. In the name of Jesus. I say, Lord God Almighty, the lame will start to walk now. Father, oh God, the blind will start to see now. I say, Lord God Almighty, every instance of leprosy is removed now. In the name of Jesus. Have you not said, whoever will touch and pray for you will heal? My God and my Father, let your healing go forth again. Like fresh dew, let your healing rest upon your people now. In the name of Jesus. Heal us. Heal us. Because if only you will heal us, we will be healed. If only you will save us, oh God, we will be saved. And so, Lord, we thank you. And we bless you. And we magnify you. And we give you all the honor. We give you all the praise, oh God. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen and amen. My brother, my sister, there's a prayer request from one of our sisters. Her 65 year old mother was rushed to the hospital today. And in fact, you know, part of the problem was finding hospitals because uh, she couldn't find bed in one place, the kind of another place. And she said, you know, her kidney is swollen. We're going to lift her up. It's Cecilia. We're going to lift her mother up. I told her, I said, go, I prayed into her hand through through the phone, say, go and lay your hand on your mother. But my brother, my sister, we are going to, we are going to back up that prayer. I'm going to say, Father, perfect your healing in her. Perfect your healing in her. Just take that prayer with me. We're not relying on the doctors. We are relying on Jehovah Rufika. The Jehovah Rufi, the Lord that heals us. And so, Father, we are saying, church, your daughter now. Everything that is wrong with her kidney, restore, repair, renew in the name of Jesus. Bring her up, oh God, from that sick bed. We speak your word to her now. We say, rise up and walk. Take up your bed and walk. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Jesus. Holy Spirit, we bless your name. In Jesus' mighty name, we pray. Please let us share the grace in fellowship. The grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. The love of God and the sweet fellowship of the Holy Spirit. Rest and abide with us now and forevermore. Amen. Surely, God's goodness and his mercy shall follow us all the days of our lives, and we shall dwell in the house of the Lord forever and ever. Amen. Say to the righteous, it is well with you.